Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Link to Liturgy's online school. This is a special course on Advent um, where we're particularly talking about the inheritance that we can gain, keep, and share. Um, so there is a lesson uh, prior to this lesson which uh, kind of defines inheritance and then the overarching theme of that and um, how we tie into um, Adam and Eve and, and what the original sin did to us. So please make sure you watch that lesson first. Um, it's uh, Adam, the tree, and Eve is what that's called. Um, and then this one today, uh, right now, we'll be mainly talking about the inheritance and how we gain that inheritance. And our focus will be on a gospel reading, uh, Matthew 9, 18 through 26. Um, I encourage you to read uh, the other two synoptic gospels, Mark and Luke, first. So let me give you those. So the one we'll be reading, Matthew 9, 18 through 26. And then also you may want to think about reading Mark 5, 21 through 43. And also Luke 8, 40 through 56, because it kind of gives you the full picture here. Um, but let me go ahead and read this first, and then we'll uh, get into uh, inheritance and how we gain the inheritance. So this is uh, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. While he was thus speaking to him, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I shall be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a tumult, he said, Depart, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put aside, he went in, took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went throughout, through all the district. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, before we get into this Gospel, I want to go ahead and share the preface. Uh, the preface is the prayer that happens right before we move into um, the Holy Holy and then the, the, the Eucharistic prayer. And so the, the preface for Advent 1, or the Advent 1 preface, is a little part of it. I encourage you to read it all, but the part that I want to focus on is this. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. Now that great day that this is referring to is the second coming of Christ. So we who watch for the second coming, we may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. This is what we are praying at the Mass during Advent is that right now we hope to inherit a promise. And, and we have, yes, if we have been baptized and we are in the state of grace, then we are, in a sense, have that promise now. But there's no guarantee that we will keep that promise. And so that's why we say we hope in it. An act of hope is really that, that we are saying that we have the forgiveness of our sins, but also that we hope to get to heaven. To hope to get to heaven really is to keep the inheritance that has been given to us, which is to keep the divine life, to stay in a relationship with God. Um, and so th this is really the stress of this is, again, how do we gain that inheritance and then how do we keep that inheritance? Now this gospel, um, I, I actually almost, this whole talk, um, I heard in a homily and I wanted to share it with this. It's great um, wisdom that I heard from a priest that's, that's not... That's really taking the um, analogical, um, the, the analogy here. So, so the way we read scripture is, you know, of course, we have the literal level. So we do have here a story about a man named Jairus who was the um, chief of the synagogue. And so he was a, a high Jewish ruler and, uh, and his daughter is ill. And so he comes to Jesus and says, please heal my daughter. Jesus goes to his house or is on the way to his house and another woman comes up. This woman had been hemorrhaging and, um, and so she, Jesus heals her and then he c continues to go on to Jairus' uh, house to heal the daughter of Jairus. Um, and so all of that is a story that took place. It is a literal story. But we also know that that's the text, that's the literal level, but there is another analogy level, which is really the spiritual significance of it. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is that all of these literal people in the story that happened have a deeper level because Christ um, intended 
there to be a, a deeper level, um, and and the Holy Spirit through Mark of, or Matthew, of course, was writing that, and Mark and Luke because they wrote about this story as well. So um, let's go ahead and uh, if, if you look at first, this is going to uh, this story is going to kind of uh, tell us about three periods of time, and so we have the first period of time is is just called the beginning, and this is the first column of the hashtag here. So we have the beginning of time which is really the supplication of the father. It's the father's wish for his daughter uh, to, to be well and to prosper. Um, we have the fullness of time, which is the, the middle section, and that's going to be really um, characterized by the healing of the woman who is hemorrhaging. Um, it, what's important to note, we find out in Matthew and Mark's account, that this, this woman was hemorrhaging for 12 years, and that's going to be significant. Um, this woman is also a Gentile. So we have the two main characters really here are a daughter, a 12-year-old daughter that is about to die, and she's a Jewish um, person because um, her dad, of course, is the leader of the synagogue. And then we have a hemorrhaging woman who is a Gentile. Um, and uh, uh, we don't know how old she is, but we do know that she's been hemorrhaging, uh, bleeding, and have had, has had no help for 12 years. And then we have the end of the story, which is uh, the raising of the daughter, um, and so, again, those three areas, the beginning, the fullness, and the end. And the, the beginning here, we're going to be looking just across the, the, the top row here. Um, the beginning is all, all the time of the Old Testament. And we typically count that, I think, as about 5,000 years or so. Um, so we can, uh, if you look in that first uh, box, we have uh, A, N, A, and D. And these are going to represent um, Adam is the first A and then Noah, and then Abraham, and then David. And we know that Abraham lived about 2,000 years before Christ. Um, now, this is an exact timing, but we have four periods of time here. Adam to Noah, Noah to Abraham, Abraham to David, and David to Jesus. And um, I've heard before, I don't know if this is actually a tradition of the church, but I've heard before that the four um, Advent candles um, portray those four periods of time. Again, again, Adam to Noah, or, or Adam to the flood, I guess you could say, and then the new beginning after the flood, and to Abraham. Abraham, there's a new beginning by the, by the establishment of the Jewish religion, um, and then Abraham to David's kingdom, and then uh, David's kingdom to the son of David, Jesus Christ. Um, and during this time, really, we have to focus on, on Abraham, uh, that, that second A, because it is Abraham who is the father of faith, who will start the Jewish religion. Moving on to the fullness of time, we have the first coming of Jesus. Um, this is the fullness of time because this is when Jesus, who is the promise and the fulfillment of everything, the fulfillment and the perfection of the Jewish faith, is born. And he is born of a woman under the law in the fullness of time. Um, and then we have the end of time, which is the second coming of Jesus. And so that's all in the first row. Now, moving down to really the, the second and third row, we will look together really at the same time because what we're talking about here is the two main characters, uh, the daughter who is representing the Jewish people and the woman who is ill and hemorrhaging and then healed who is representing the Gentile people. So we have to remember the, the, the Jewish uh, daughter in this story is 12 years old. So she is a, um, really, in, in, the, in the Jewish culture, she would be at her prime, or at least coming into her prime. Um, a 12, 13-year-old girl would, would have been going either going through or past puberty at this time, and so they would be fertile. They would be able to marry at this time and, and start a family. And so this is a great, uh, great and exciting thing for her father, that uh, now his daughter, who is at her prime, is able to um, start, start a family and, uh, and move on, you know, in a sense with, with what God has for her life. And so we would say that the daughter was born uh, at Abraham. So the, the, the Jewish people were born, because they represent the daughter here, the daughter represents them. The Jewish people were born when Abraham started the religion, um, the Jewish religion, the Israelites. And this, of course, um, was a covenant that God made with Abraham. You will be my people, Abraham, and I will be your God. And so we'll say that from the time of, of Adam, just symbolically here, from I'm sorry, from the time of Abraham to the time of Jesus was 12 years. So this daughter, who was at her prime, represents the Jewish people who are at their prime. If you think about this, the Jewish people 
had um, been waiting. They had had prophets and, and they had had their kingdoms and they had their temple and they had been waiting for this Messiah. Well, Jesus Christ at his coming really is their prime for this, uh, for this nation. Um, okay, now let's move down to the Gentiles. Um, we know that the, the woman, and the, because of Luke and Mark's gospel, we know that the hemorrhaging woman has been hemorrhaging for 12 years. So there's a similarity between the hemorrhaging woman and the 12-year-old um, daughter. When the 12-year-old daughter was born, that is when the hemorrhaging or the sickness happened in the woman. And, and we do know from the woman that she had tried every single physician. She had spent all of her resources and nothing helped. In fact, it says in Scripture that she only got worse. So I want you to think about these two parallels here. When the daughter, the Jewish people, are born, what are the Gentile people doing? Well, the Jewish nation is born and the Gentiles are fallen into a deep bleeding. Um, they are, um, this bleeding, this, this sickness is, is really, um, you know, manifests itself through idolatry. Um, the, the, the worship of devils, it says in the Psalms that the, the gods of the Gentiles are devils. So we think of how many civilizations that were really worshiping false gods, which are really devils or demons. Um, we have, you know, you think of, of all the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Aztecs, um, on and on and on. All of these pagan civilizations were bleeding in their idolatry and also their impurity. And so when the Jewish nation is born and they are striving to be God's people and they are moving towards um, this, this perfection and this promise of Jesus Christ, while that's all happening, the Gentiles are bleeding and bleeding and bleeding in their idolatry and in their in impurity. And they are seeking um, all of this help, you know, from these false demons or from these demons, from these false gods. They are seeking all of these um, other ways of wisdom outside of God and nothing helps them. In fact, they only get worse. And that's what happens. That's, that's where it leads us up here to the fullness of time. Now, when Jesus does come, what do the Jewish people do? They reject him. Um, it says um, when, and, and I think I believe it's in Matthew's gospel, that when Herod had heard of the newborn king, Herod and all of Jerusalem were troubled. Why would you be troubled when, you, when, your, when your fulfillment is there, when the promise has come, when now your salvation is at hand? Um, and so there is an, a rejection and an apostasy. Apostasy just means to leave the post, to abandon your faith. And this is what happens. Um, and, and so truly the Jewish people lost their inheritance. The Jews that did not accept Jesus Christ lost their inheritance. And, and they are represented as almost dead. Here they are at their prime. Things could be going so great because they could accept Jesus and, and find their, their promise and their fulfillment. But instead, they reject Jesus and they appear to be dead. Um, just like the girl in the story, they appear to be dead. Now, Jesus says, no, she's just sleeping. So we take this to mean that the Jewish people, and Jewish faith in general, but the Jewish people as well, that have rejected Jesus Christ, um, although they seem to be dead and are not producing fruit, Jesus says, no, they are just sleeping. So we'll kind of pause there for a second and come back to that. Now, what about the Gentiles? Well, the Gentiles, the ones that are bleeding in their idolatry and impurity, they end up, not, not immediately, um, but, um, but eventually, um, especially within two, three, four hundred years, they end up accepting Christ. And, and Jesus Christ tells his apostles to go out to all nations, which would have been all of these Gentile nations. Uh, that's what the word Gentile means, is nation. And to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to teach them all that I have commanded you. Well, it, it's the Gentile nations that accept Christ. So they reach out like this woman. They reach out to the hem of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not even one of their own. He did not even come for them. And, but they still reach out to this person that is not even of their own. And they are healed by Jesus Christ. And they are given the inheritance. And so the inheritance passes from the Jewish people to the Gentile people. Um, now, what does that mean? Well, that means the woman, the woman's uh, out of woman's faith, she is healed and her bleeding stops. Her bleeding stops, which means now she can be fruitful. 
Um, and she can stop her idolatry. So these nations must stop their idolatry and the nations must stop their impurity and mold themselves to Jesus Christ so they can bear fruit in Christ. And so this is where we are, where we are at at the fullness of time. Um, now, what can we hope for in this column between the first coming and the second coming? Well, we can truly hope that any Jewish person can realize uh, the truth of Jesus Christ, realize that Jesus is the fulfillment and the promise, and to accept him and not reject him. And we especially can hope that everyone, every Gentile person, um, that anybody else can be baptized and gain the inheritance that is due to them. So really, anyone listening to this, whether Jew or Gentile, to be baptized, to gain the inheritance, and then to keep that inheritance. We, we cannot forget, especially the Gentiles, the, the, the Gentile people that gain the inheritance, we cannot forget that this inheritance can be lost. Why in the world would this healed woman return back to the bleeding? Why, after we have accepted Jesus Christ and been baptized, why would we return back to our life of sin and lose the very inheritance given to us? Now, I, talk, I speak about this in an individual. Why would I do that as a baptized, confirmed Catholic? But, but also, why would nations do that? You know, we have nations like France and Germany and Mexico and Poland and, and all these places. As a, as a nation, why would we go back? And, and now, after gaining the great inheritance for our nation and our people, why would we go back to the bleeding? So many nations are tempted to go back to the idolatry, to go back to the false worship of devils, um, and also to, to go back to that impurity, really throwing off God, throwing off his laws, and, 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 and not, not paying attention to Christ um, in Scripture, and to go back to the times of bleeding. This is, this is absolutely crazy. So really, two things we can learn here. All the Gentile nations that have been presented with the gospel must not return back to the time of bleeding, but must gain the inheritance and keep the inheritance and pass that inheritance on to future generations um, and claim not only our own soul, but also our land for Christ. Um, and then for the Jewish people, we have to remember that Jesus has said they are not dead, but sleeping. So this, I think, means two things. It means one, the Jewish people have hope right now. Although, yes, they have rejected Christ as a whole, they can still accept him and be raised by Jesus Christ from that so-called dead state into producing fruit. We know that this will happen at the end of time, just like it does in the end of this gospel, that there will be a time, and this is um, really talked about in Romans 11.11, 11, if you look at this, that St. Paul says this is a great mystery, but somehow the Jewish people, because they are the chosen people, will be given a chance um, to accept Jesus Christ. You know, they are waiting for the Messiah, so hopefully the second coming they will embrace the Messiah. So for the Jewish person, if, you know, if you're hearing this, accept Jesus Christ now. Let him reach down and pull you up from your, from your sleep. And we pray in general for the whole Jewish nation that if they do not recognize Christ now, they will recognize him in his second coming. He can pull them up, raise them from that so-called dead sleeping state, and, and they can, uh, of course, regain that inheritance that has been lost. What about for the Gentiles? Well, we also have a few things uh, that Paul and Jesus Christ tell us about this, the second coming. Uh, one, we know that the second coming will not come until the gospel has been preached to all nations. This is from Matthew 24:14. And then we also know, St. Paul tells us that there will be um, a rebellion and apostasy. This is 2 Thessalonians 2. And we also know that there will be an antichrist, someone that will pretend to be Christ, but of course will be the antichrist. And that's also from 2 Thessalonians 2. So as we await that second coming, let us have hope and let us hope that we will continue to hold on to the promises of our inheritance. Let's pray for all of those that do not have that inheritance. For those that do have the inheritance, gain it, keep it, share it. And for those that do not have the inheritance, please take it seriously, be baptized, and, um, and, 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 and of course gain, keep, and share that inheritance with others. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. Thank you for joining me for this lesson. Uh, please uh, continue to watch uh, for uh, future lessons where we'll also talk in this series or in this course about keeping the inheritance and sharing the inheritance.